Hi everyone, I'm Rob Horlacher from Project Sandbox, a University of Lethbridge library initiative. In this video, we're going to look at the Insta360 One X camera. In this kit, you will find the Insta360 ONE X camera, a small tripod, the Insta360 ONE X battery, a USB to micro USB cable, a micro USB to micro USB cable, a micro USB to USB C cable, and a micro USB to lightning connector cable. So the Insta360 ONE X, um, let's just call it the 360 camera from now on, is controlled by either the camera itself or you can control it via an app on your mobile phone or tablet. If you would like a link to all of the different software that you might want for the Insta360, also the 360 camera, um, you can look at it in the description. I'll leave a little link there for you to click on. But for the moment, let's look at just how to control the 360 camera with just the camera itself. To use the Insta360 ONE X camera without the app, we first need to turn it on. When you turn on the camera, you'll notice that there's a little camera icon. If you press the big button when it has that icon, it'll take a picture. If you want to take a video, you just need to press the little button until it has the video. You'll notice there's different settings. Press the big button once. That'll start the video and you'll see the timer increase. Press the big button again and you're done taking a video. Um, the next thing to notice is if you actually want to change anything. To do that, you go into the gear, which is the settings. Um, and then you can scroll through the different lists just with the little button and select with the big button. Um, so this is the one for camera, video. What we want to look at is Wi-Fi. So if you want to connect to this thing over Wi-Fi, you need to first find out what the Wi-Fi network name and password is. To do that, you scroll down to Wi-Fi password, you hit the big button, and then that'll take you to a menu that will have the network name and the password. Um, you would just need to sign on to that like you would any Wi-Fi network, and that'll connect you to this camera. Um, of course, you'll need the app as well, but I will go over the app later on in this tutorial. Um, so that's how you connect via Wi-Fi. There's a couple other things to note, though. First is say you you just took that video and picture and now you want to move it onto your computer. To do that, what you need to do is grab the USB to micro USB cable and plug that into the Insta360. I like to use the tripod just as a nice little base station. After that, what you want to do is you want to hook up this to your computer, obviously. So let's just do that. So you heard it plugged in, and you'll notice that the USB drive appeared. When you double click on that, go into DCIM, camera one, you'll see all of the content that I just took, and you can just click and drag it to wherever you might want it to go. Once you're done um, clicking and dragging that content, and you have it saved to a safe place, we can go back to the camera. What you'll want to do with the camera at this point, because you're 200% sure you got all of your footage off the camera, now what you want to do before you return it to the service desk is you want to remove it. To do that, we go back into the settings. You go to, you don't hit the little button, you hit the big button until you get to about. In this about area, you want to scroll down until you see format. When you click the big button and go into format, you'll see a checkbox. What will happen when you hit the checkbox is it's going to totally remove all the files you just took from the camera and they will not be retrievable. If you'll notice, you didn't really see any kind of like signs that it actually was getting removed. It'll just look like the screen froze for a moment. If that's what happens, it means it's working properly and all of your files are getting removed from this. Um, just remember, do not do this until you are 200% sure that all of your files are off of this. At this point, you can turn it off by holding the little button. And then you can return it back to the service desk. 
So as you can see from controlling the Insta360 ONE X from just using the camera, it's a little hard to tell um, what your images might look like. In order to do that, we need to use a Android or Apple device. Um, so let's take a look at that now. To control the Insta360 ONE X with the app, we first need to turn on the camera by holding the big button. Once it's on, we can go into our phone and click on the app. Once the app is turned on, you just need to click on the camera button and then go to connect now. This will bring up some information on how to actually connect via Wi-Fi. So I've already connected and I've gotten all the information off of the camera. So I can just go to the One X uh, Wi-Fi signal directly. Once it says that I'm connected to it and my internet is not available, it means that it should be good to go. So now you can see me and this is roughly what the camera is taking a picture of. Um, we can scroll around to get a better look of everything now, unlike when you just use the camera where you can't see everything. As you can see, we're also in the camera mode. What you can do though is you can click on the little magic wand and change filters. You can click on the sliding bars and change some of your exposure settings, um, whether it's in raw, white balancing, stuff like that. You can click on video. Once again, you can look around and you can go through the same um, menu systems there as well. As you can see, it does have some different options for video though. The other two things I want to bring your attention to is the Live 360 and the Live Shooting Modes. These are ways that you can actually um, send things to Facebook and stuff like that right away and actually live stream from the Insta360 camera. If you're not interested in that though, uh, you can just use take normal pictures or take video. One thing I'll mention about live streaming is this is why you need the concophony of cables that come with this kit. Um, depending on your phone or tablet or whatever you're connecting it with, you will have to connect directly from that device to the Insta360 camera. Because um, as you can see, this does not have internet right now, which means that it, it has nothing to connect to. So keep that in mind if you do on a live stream. But the next thing I want to bring your attention to is this settings button. When you go into settings, this is what allows you to format the card over your phone. Make sure you're, you don't do this unless you're 200% sure that you have all of the content off of the camera. Um, so if you do want to format the camera and you've gotten all of your stuff off, you can just go to micro SD card management. Um, and then you hit that format button. I'm not gonna do that yet because I haven't taken any of the content off, but you'll wanna make sure you do do this before you return it to the service desk. If you actually wanna get content off, you'll wanna click on your little album option and you'll see a couple different things that I've actually taken already. To export these to usable files, you can just click on whichever one you want. As you can see, it's my beautiful face. And then you can click the three dots. Um, the three dots will give you some different options, like if you want to view it in VR, if you want the logo, and just anything else. What you'll want to do if you want to export it is hit that square with the arrow pointing to the top right. It's just at the top of the screen right now. Once you click on that, you'll see that you can export it from a bunch of different options, whether you want it exported to Facebook right away or Instagram, whatever. We want a local file though, because this will just give us a JPEG or an MP4. So to do that, you just click the local button and then it'll give you some different options like spin view, 360, sky. You can do a lot of different stuff with this. Um, say I want tiny planet because I like my head to look really large. I just hit export and then it'll begin exporting the photo. Um, this will go into whichever folder you have set to your device. Once that's done, we can see that we actually have it somewhere and it's good to go. That's pretty much all I actually have to show you for the app. If you do want to learn a little bit more about suggestions they have, you can click on the tutorials link and then they have tons of different things that you can watch to give you a more in-depth look at how to use the camera. Finally, if you dragged and dropped all of your files to your desktop, you'll need to download the Insta360 Studio software. Um, this software will convert all of those 
weird file types into things like MP4s and JPEGs, which everything can use. Um, the added benefit of the Insta360 Studio software is if you do download it, it'll allow Premiere to now edit these uh, different file types. If you don't want to download it on your computers, you can go to the Project Sandbox computers just on level 10 of the library, and we have that software installed on those where you can export the videos from there as well. So the last thing I wanted to show you is what you do with your files if you actually did drag and drop them to your desktop. What you do with them is is you can either open the program right away or you can just double click on whichever video or image you would like to edit and export out to something that's a little more useful. As you can see, this is what opened up for me. It just opened up in my alternative window, so don't worry too much why you didn't see this actually appear. So, as you can see, there's a couple different options. If this is an image, you'll still have the exact same things that you can change. So on the right hand side, you can use flow state stabilization. Um, if you had a case, you could change it. As you can see, different lines and stuff appear depending on the case you chose. Um, but we don't have a case, so you would generally just click normal unless for some reason you bought one on your own. Um, so the main thing that you'll want to know how to do with this application is how to export this as either an mp4 or a jpeg depending on if you have a video or an image to do that you go up to this top option and click it this one says i've done changes do you want to save it i don't really care but i will hit ok just so you can see what you should do then this little option box will pop up with all the information so the resolution of this the file name and where the file path is going um, and the bitrate, uh, you can probably just leave it as is and just hit OK. After you hit OK, it will begin exporting it, your document to wherever you said it might be going. You can see there's a little percentage bar at the top and it will increase pretty much as fast as the, uh, your computer will allow. Once the file says 100% and finished, the file is obviously done. And now you'll have a, a file type which you'll be able to actually edit comparatively to this INSV file type, which is a very specific file type. So like always, that's what I have for you. Remember to just be creative with the camera and try different things out. Thank you very much for watching this video. And if you would like to subscribe to the UofL library YouTube page, you can click on the link on the page right now, or you can continue watching Project Sandbox videos by clicking the one of the two video links that is on the page right now. Once again, thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you at either some of our workshops or you can see me in just some more of our videos. Um, thank you very much, and I'll see you all later.